Hey everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today is a very exciting video because I'm going to go head to head with Peter Lindgren in a sound design standoff. Peter is one of my favorite filmmaker YouTubers and I really like his work and in this video we're going to see who's the better sound designer. This video is all part of our sound effects challenge which we're running right now and if you don't know anything about it, there's a link down in the description that will take you to a video explaining everything you need to know. So essentially me and Peter are going to make the sound design for the same edit which is going to be sort of like an entry to the Artlist sound effects challenge. It's a one minute edit with footage from Artgrid. And to make this challenge interesting, we're going to use only the free sound effects pack that we give away for people who don't have an Artlist subscription so that they can also enter the competition and make their edit for the challenge. So we're only going to use that um, in this video. It's about 30 sound effects and it's definitely going to be really challenging trying to find out how to make a full um, sound design for the one minute edit. I'm using only these sound effects. So before we start, let's say hi to Peter and then I'm gonna show you guys the edit and um, we're gonna start making the sound design. Artlist and Yuval, thanks so much for inviting me to join in on this sound design competition or combat. I don't know what you wanna call it, but I'm super eager to see how you're gonna make your sound design and what we're gonna come up with. So let's get to it. All right, so no more talking. Let's get this challenge started and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna win. Sorry, Peter, but yeah, let's get going. So here I have the free 30 sound effects pack and um, let's listen to a couple of these and see what we have to work with. Let's see, some ambient stuff. Tiger sound effect. This one's good. Okay, some pretty nice sound effects here. It's not going to be easy, but I think I can do it. And it's gonna be very interesting seeing like how different the two edits are gonna be like between me and Peter. We are pretty limited because we're using only the 30 sounds, but I do think that um, our two edits might end up being uh, completely different, which would be really cool. So yeah, I'm gonna start doing this sound design and um, I'll actually finish it up and then we're gonna break it down together. So I'm gonna start doing it now. Okay, so we're in Premiere and I've opened up my project and there's quite a lot of sounds, um, as you can see. It took me at least a few good hours to complete this sound design, so um, I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'm really excited to start breaking this down and show you what I did. So let's get started. And the video starts off with this scene, this motorbike spinning around um, and it's very powerful. It's a very powerful scene, so I really wanted to emphasize that with this sound design and like just start off the edit with a lot of power and energy. So the first sound that I have here is this sound. Then we have this engine going. And the last one is sort of like an ambience. It's actually supposed to be like a beach. Even though it's not an actual motorcycle sound effect, um, it works in this situation. And that's pretty much what I've done throughout this whole edit. I've taken sounds that are meant to be one thing and I've used them for another thing because I'm really limited with like only the 30 sound effect. So the three sounds together. All right, so for this one, we're basically just continuing um, the motorcycle sound from the previous clip. So it's this sound. And you can see how it's kind of like coming down, sort of. So the effect that I used with these sound effects um, is basically a low pass where I keyframed it to kind of fade away and it just like sets the mood right um, going into the scene. So let's listen to that again. And the next sound effect that I have here is uh, pretty unique. So I'd be pretty surprised if Peter actually used this sound like in the entire edit because it's pretty unique. And it's basically the sound of a tiger and so when I have like the tiger like, coming in and taking this over. Um, I did put a low pass filter on it to make it like more atmospheric and like less um, obvious, I guess. 
And then at the end of this scene, we have an impact. Moving on, we have this breath sound effect. And then for the next scene, we have two footsteps. And of course, we've listened to the sound effects before and there's no footsteps over there. So this is basically a punch from the sound effects. This is the original sound. So it's basically these two. And then I just applied a low pass and there you have it, footsteps. And for this next clip, which was this guy in an ice bath, this one I really enjoyed putting together. So let's have a listen. The first sound is this. And this is the next sound. To kind of give the lower frequencies. So the previous one was more higher frequencies. This one is lower. Um, so I'm basically creating depth. And for this one, I really wanted this like bubbly, deep kind of water sound. So the first thing I did was apply the equalizer. And again, I lowered the higher frequencies. And then I also applied a denoise filter, which also helps kind of focus more on those deep um, sound effects. So denoise is another effect that you can uh, try out and play with. And this last sound is the most interesting one. So I wanted something to resemble the ice moving around the water. So this is actually the original sound. So it's actually an explosion. But then I applied some uh, denoise again and EQ, but this time I lowered the lower frequencies because I wanted the more sharp sounds, which was uh, more of the glass and in my case, turned into ice cubes. Little breath there as well. Moving on, we have this. So same thing again with the footsteps. It's just the punching from the fight scene sound effect, again with a lot of low pass. And then just at the beginning here, I actually put a sword sound effect. Um, I don't know why, but like lens flares um, kind of give off, like for me at least, this kind of like sharp sound effect. It's almost like you can hear the glass of the lens. So in my head, it makes sense. And for this, I used some reverb and analog delay. Then the next thing we go into is a pretty powerful and fast um, action going on. So I wanted to have a sound that kind of leads on to that, kind of builds anticipation. So I took the sound effect of an explosion and then I reversed it. So I basically did the right click, speed and duration and reverse speed. So then we went from this basically to this. So for this scene, we kind of have a lot of sound effects. So with this scene, the way I approached it is I kind of looked first at what was obvious that I needed, uh, which in this case is the um, punches and maybe some whooshes. And that's kind of like on the surface, that's like the obvious, the first things that you think about. And then I built on that and went like a level deeper um, to more ambient, atmospheric sound effects. And that's usually what I do because it's just easier to start off with the obvious and then move to more creative and atmospheric stuff. So that's my usual workflow. So let's listen to only the obvious sound effects. And that sounds pretty good. Like you could leave it at that and that's what a lot of people do. But to get it to the next level, we need to add more impact and more surround sound effects. So this is the same thing, but just uh, with two impacts added. And just those two impacts already made this much better, but that's not everything. I basically wanted to give the feeling of the fight happening like with a crowd. So I wanted to add in some noise and uh, there's no sound effects of a crowd in the sound effects bundle, but I've managed to just use some other sound effects and manipulate them to make it sound sort of like a crowd or more of like a general noise. The first one is this one. And this is actually the sound of a street. So kind of noisy, 
but it sounds more like a city. But I made it work because I used the low pass filter. And then I also keyframed the low pass so that it has this sort of effect like I made before. Um, let's listen to it. It kind of draws you into the scene. And then we have another impact. This one a little bit more powerful and like in your face. And then we also have this glitch sound. Kind of blends well with the all of the flickering like lights going on. So I'm basically trying to intensify the scene. And then the last sound that I have here is this sound that's played the original sound for a second. It's like a police radio. Which again doesn't really make sense in real life, but I wanted to make it sound like uh, maybe it's like someone watching it on TV and there's a commentary. Um, so I just applied some low pass so that you can't really hear what they're saying and it's more um, atmosphere. So let's play all of that together. For this shot, I only have an impact and also just sounds from the previous clip uh, going into this one, which is also something to keep in mind. It always blends in better when you pull out the sounds like going into the next visual. It helps things uh, flow more naturally and uh, it really smoothens out the edits. So don't cut your sound effects right where the visual starts or ends. Um, that would just make the cuts very clear. And the water scene, a lot of low pass filters. This scene again with the sharp sword sound that I really like. And this time I've added some distortion and the low pass. And I've also slowed it down to like 40%. So it drags on for longer. Then these two impacts uh, really add a lot. And then again some punching and whooshes. Now, this one's pretty interesting. I really wanted the sound of the crowd cheering because this guy is um, going like crazy, I won. I feel like there should be a pretty significant crowd reaction to this. So I ended up going with a car drifting instead, which surprisingly enough works. And you can see how it kind of builds up from the moment they're fighting and builds up, builds up. And then we have the climax over here and then it fades away into the next shot. And this is again, just using a low pass filter and keyframing it. So we get this build up and we get a more dynamic edit. And let's see how this would have sounded if I just used the low pass without keyframing. But when you add the keyframes, then all of a sudden it makes sense. And for this one, I decided that instead of focusing on the action, which is this guy running, like I could have just made the footsteps. Um, I wanted to actually emphasize the movement of the camera. You can see it's going pretty fast um, up this fence. We have a lot of motion blur. We have a lot of shakiness. And I really wanted to emphasize that. I decided that I would just add wishes for when we have these uh, metal parts of the fence just going by in the foreground. And I think it really helps feel the speed and the movement in the shot. And I feel like having the sound of the elements in the foreground really adds a lot of depth. For this high hockey sequence, I think that's where I use the most sound effects in the edit. It cuts kind of quick between the shots. We get different angles. We have the blades going against the ice. We have the hockey stick. We have a lot of movement and a lot of um, dynamic camera moves. So this really required uh, quite some work. So let's break it down. First sound is, you guessed it, again, the sword sound effect, which I like so much. It just works with the blades um, cutting across the ice. Then we have kind of a whoosh. It just really helps with the transition between the three cats. Then I really wanted the constant sound of the blades like skating across the ice. And for that, I actually used this fire sound effect, which sounds like this. 
with a little bit of imagination, you can see how that is basically skating on ice. So all I did was add the high pass effect, um, made it feel more like ice and less like fire. Then we have this explosion uh, with the glass. And that kind of just feels like the first leg going into the ice. It's a bit dramatic, but I like it. And then I have the same sound effects, but just on a higher volume for when the cats happen between the shots. Then also a uh, car drifting, because why not? And all together we get this. So really it's about looking at the scene and trying to analyze what kind of sound effects um, you're gonna need for this, what the camera movement is and what's happening in the scene. Again, for this one, I knew there's a lot of movement and there's a lot of like texture between the blades, the eyes, everything should feel kind of textury, but also um, dynamic and fast. So let's play it one more time. Then we have another water scene and some whooshes here to uh, emphasize the speed. And then these sounds, there wasn't any sound of like spinning wheels or anything, which I wanted. So um, I was trying to look for something that would work. And then I actually used this glitch sound effect. There's also the sound of an engine, which even though um, this thing obviously doesn't have an engine, it still makes sense in our head. Some more impacts. Sword again, whooshes and impacts, car drifting, and that's basically it. For this, I really wanted uh, like someone screaming like yes or something like that, but there was no sound effect uh, in the pack. And this is actually the only thing where I couldn't make something happen from the 30 sound effects that I uh, got with the pack. So um, I was not very happy with that. It's the last two shots. So let's now play everything together with the music and then we'll also play just the sound effects. So that was my version of the sound design. Hopefully you guys liked it. And um, now we're gonna watch Peter's and I haven't watched it yet and I'm gonna do it right now live. And honestly, I'm a little bit scared. I'm not really sure what to expect. Hopefully um, it's not too good, but let's watch it now together and we'll find out.
I'm impressed, honestly. For using only the 30 sound effects, I think this is a really good sound design, actually. And what's cool to watch is that we actually did have kind of the same ideas for some of the shots, like using the impacts for footsteps, um, even the tiger sound, which I thought Peter is not gonna use. He used it pretty much for the same thing, so I'm not a sound design genius like I thought I was. But there still were some differences, and um, that was also really fun to watch, and it was really fun making the sound design, and just kind of not knowing what Peter's gonna do, and then watching this um, really awesome job again, Peter. So yeah, that was really fun, and I think it can kind of show you what you can do with only um, just a handful of sound effects. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, there's only about a week left for the sound effects challenge entries, so don't miss out. There's a link down in the description below with all the information you need to know, so make sure you check it out and enter the challenge. But that's basically it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing for more of these videos. Also, let us know down in the comments below which version of the sound design you like better, mine or Peter's. One of you guys commenting could win a one-year free subscription to the Artlist sound effects catalog. A huge thank you to Peter for taking part in this video. It was really fun. And until the next time, stay creative. <laughs>